here let's begin about physiology of heart sounds so heart sounds are of two types systolic heart sounds and the diastolic heart sounds remember the only first heart sound that is s1 is the systolic heart sound but s2 s3 and s4 are the diastolic heart sounds generally these sounds are produced because of the closure of the valves but not because of the opening of the valves if you see the physiological mechanism of the valve closure as well as opening valve generally open first on the right side of the heart but the closure of the valves is seen first during left side of the heart so remember that opening of the valves always first is on the right side but closure of the valves is always first towards left side of the heart and these closure of valves are responsible for development of heart sounds generally a unilateral increase in the cardiac output of a ventricle delays the closure of valves of s2 not only that stenotic valves open slower and close more slowly which means they stay open longer duration of the time so there would be a delay of the closure of those valves so now let us discuss about individual heart sounds in detail and let me talk about first heart sound called as s1 which is the systolic sound the first heart sound is mainly produced because of the closure of mitral valve and the tricuspid valve mitral valve and the tricuspid valve and it is mainly caused by a vibrating turbulence of the blood as well as the ventricular walls generally the closure of the mitral valve as well as the tricuspid valve takes place during isovolumetric contraction period of the cardiac cycle so if you see isometric contraction isometric contraction period of the cardiac cycle where the ventricular pressure greatly increases when compared to that of the atrial pressure responsible for the closure of atrioventricular valves they are mitral and the tricuspid responsible for the development of the heart sound s1 and this s1 is audible and the splitting of this s1 may occur during inspiration so and this type of splitting is called as physiological splitting and there would be a fixed splitting of s1 can also be seen but under pathological conditions like right bundle branch block and remember that there would be no splitting of the s1 during left bundle branch block okay so if you write these important points over here physiological splitting physiological splitting of s1 physiological splitting of s1 generally seen during inspiration inspiration very very important mcq point and next is about the pathological splitting so if you talk about pathological splitting pathological pathological splitting of s1 pathological splitting of s1 is especially seen during right bundle branch block but not during left bundle branch block this is about s1 sound after s1 heart sound the next one is called as the second heart sound we know that s2 s3 as well as s4 are the diastolic sounds because they are produced during diastolic period of the cardiac cycle but s1 is produced during systolic period of the cardiac cycle that is isometric or isovolumetric contraction period or the phase of the cardiac cycle and next is about s2 when we talk about s2 sound it is mainly because of the closure of the semi lunar valves semi lunar valves means aortic valve and the pulmonic valve 
there's a reason we can call it as a2 component as well as p2 component a2 component is produced because of the closure of the aortic valve and p2 component is produced because of the closure of the pulmonic valve an audible splitting of second sound occurs with a unilateral increase in the output of the right heart that delays the closing of the pulmonic valve so whenever the venous return towards the right side of the heart increases automatically it takes more time for the filling of the right ventricle when compared to that of the left ventricle in such conditions it takes more time for the emptying of the right ventricle when compared to that of the left ventricle so left ventricle empties early and after the left ventricular ejection is completed the aortic valve will be closed that is a2 component will be appear first and later what happens if there is a delayed filling of the right ventricle if there is increased venous return towards right ventricle because more blood is pumped towards the pulmonary artery the pulmonic valve closes the pulmonic valve closes after aortic valve that is called as a p2 component so this is called as splitting okay splitting is generally seen because of the delayed closure of an individual valve not only that the delayed closure of this pulmonic valve seen under physiological conditions called as inspiration there's a reason we will call it as physiological splitting not only in the physiological conditions during inspiration there will be splitting of s2 component that is pulmonic valve is closed after the aortic component another condition also we will see where there is delayed closure of the pulmonic valve that is atrial septal defect let us see what happens during atrial septal defect so generally if you talk about this is the interatrial septum over here if you say that this is the interatrial septum this is the left atria and this is the right atria right and this is the atrial septal defect because of more blood is shunted towards right atrium right atrial volume increases from the right ventricular volume increases and the volume which is eject towards the pulmonary artery also increases during atrial septal defect because of that there would be delay of the closure of the pulmonic valve because of more blood is shunted from the left side of the heart towards right side that's the reason remember that under pathological conditions the splitting of s2 can be seen especially during atrial septal defect but under physiological conditions the splitting of s2 can be seen during inspiration that is in both the conditions the pulmonic valve closure is delayed that is what is a important point for you to remember and not only about the atrial septal defect as well as during inspiration there are like similar audible splitting can also be identified with the right bundle branch block like we said that the pathological splitting of s1 can be seen in a right bundle branch block the pathological splitting of s2 can also be seen in right bundle branch block there is another type of splitting called as paradoxical splitting generally we know that closure of the valves towards left side of the heart will be earlier when compared to that of the right side which means aortic valve should close first when compared to that of the pulmonic valve but paradoxical splitting means pulmonic valve is closed first then the aortic valve why this is happening so whenever the pulmonic valve is closed first and later if the aortic valve is closed it is a reversal of the normal physiological closure of the valves right there is a reason we are calling it as a paradoxical splitting so this paradoxical splitting we can call it as p2 a2 component rather than a2 p2 component under physiological conditions always we should say that a2 p2 because aortic valve closes first because it's on the left side and next is the closure of pulmonic valve but in the paradoxical splitting there would be closure of pulmonic valve first then there would be a closure of aortic valve and this paradoxical splitting of s2 is predominantly seen with left bundle branch block as well as with aortic stenosis let us discuss why during left bundle branch block 
there would be delay of the impulses towards left side of the heart because of the bundle branch of the left side is blocked. There is a reason the left ventricular contraction is delayed and right ventricular contraction is normal because of the right bundle branch is absolutely normal. So, there would be normal contraction of the right ventricle, normal ejection of the blood into the pulmonary artery and normal closure of the pulmonic valve and the pulmonic valve is closed first. Later what happens is from the blocked left bundle branch, the impulses reach the left part of the heart that is left ventricle, then there would be a left ventricular contraction, then there would be a left ventricular ejection, after that there would be a closure of the aortic valve. There is a reason in left bundle branch block, because of the delay of the impulses towards left side of the heart, there would be P2 component first, after that there would be A2 component. And not only that, this S2 can be accentuated with hypertension and remember that this S2 intensity is diminished with stenosis. So, this is what is about second heart zone. And after second heart zone, next we will discuss about the third heart zone. So, as we know that second, third and fourth are the diastolic heart zones, we should know at what phase of the cardiac cycle second heart sound is produced. Why we are calling it as a diastolic sound. We know that in the cardiac cycle, the systole has three phases, isometric contraction, rapid ejection and reduced ejection. After the ejection phase is completed, the ventricular pressure slightly decreases. The slight decrease in the ventricular pressure is called as protodiastole. Protodiastole is called as the first phase of ventricular diastole. So, during protodiastole, the ventricular pressure slightly drops when compared to that of the aortic pressure responsible for the closure of semilunar valves. This is the mechanism of development of second heart sound. So, there is a reason second heart sound is a diastolic heart sound. Second heart sound is produced during protodiastolic period of the cardiac cycle. And when we talk about third heart zone, third heart zone is especially occurs during rapid filling phase of a very compliant ventricle. Generally, in the diastole, we have five phases in the cardiac cycle, protodiastole, isovolumetric relaxation, rapid filling, reduced filling and atrial systole. So, after isovolumetric relaxation, there will be opening of atrioventricular valves. That is example, if you talk about the left side of the heart, mitral valve opens. When mitral valve opens, there is a sudden rush of the blood from atria to the ventricles. Because of the sudden rush of the blood from atria to the ventricles, it creates a vibrations in the chordae tendinae as well as contraction of the papillary muscles and the flowing blood creates vibrations in the chordae tendinae during rapid filling phase of the cardiac cycle when mitral valve opens responsible for the development of third heart zone. So, remember that third heart zone is produced during rapid filling phase of the cardiac cycle and specifically due to the vibration setups which are created in the chordae tendinae. And this S3 sometimes normal in children as well as in younger adults, but it is pathological in older adults. So, in older adults, the third heart sound that is S3 is often associated with volume overload of the left ventricle. And after this, what is a pathological S3? Remember that a pathological S3 is called a ventricular gallop. So, this is about S3 and it is the third heart sound and it is produced during rapid filling phase of the cardiac cycle. And next one is called as the fourth heart sound called as S4. S4 is produced or coincides with atrial contraction or atrial systole. So, atrial systole is a period where it is associated with S4 and S4 is produced because of atrial contraction against a stiff ventricle. Generally, this S4 is also inaudible sound, but it becomes prominent when there is a diastolic dysfunction of the heart. So, remember whenever there is a diastolic dysfunction of the heart, 
atria tries to contract rigorously to push the blood from the atria to the ventricles against resistance. In this condition, the atria is working much more efficiently to push the blood from atria to the ventricles when there is a diastolic dysfunction of the left ventricle. There is a diastolic dysfunction of the left ventricle in condition like concentric hypertrophy. In concentric hypertrophy, the left ventricular chamber size is reduced. So the ventricle can accommodate only less volume. So in such conditions, atria try to push maximally by contracting rigorously to produce abnormal or audible kind of a sound called as S4. Not only that, it can also be seen during ventricular infarction because even the infected ventricle is non-compliant ventricle. This infected ventricle also cannot relax properly. If it cannot relax properly, then there would be a diastolic dysfunction of the ventricles. So remember one important point that any condition that creates diastolic dysfunction of the left ventricle or diastolic dysfunction of the ventricles in general responsible for the development of S4 which is generally accentuated S4 we can say otherwise S4 is inaudible and it always coincides with or produced because of atrial contraction. So if you have a quick summary related to this S1 is produced during isovolumetric contraction period of the cardiac cycle and it is a systolic heart sound. S2 is produced during protodiastolic period of the cardiac cycle and it is mainly because of the closure of the semilunar valves and S3 is also a diastolic sound produced because of rapid filling of the ventricles that is rapid filling phase of the cardiac cycle and S4 is produced during atrial systole. And this is what is about S1 to S4. And there are other extra sounds we can see in cardiovascular physiology. If you see these extra sounds which are heard during systolic period of the cardiac cycle, these are like clicks. So there are like clicks which can be mid click or late systolic click, mid systolic click. These clicks are called as extra sounds which are usually as a result of a systolic prolapse of the mitral or tricuspid valve and it is often accompanied by valvular regurgitation. And if we talk about these extra sounds which can be heard during diastolic period of the cardiac cycle, the best example is the opening snap of the mitral or the tricuspid valve which is the indicative of stenosis. By this we completed the physiology of heart sounds.